Under layer stuff, we've got these equations. Okay, we, we use the equations to get us functional relationships for correlations, but we didn't really use the equations directly, right? We didn't use them to directly solve for uh, temperature gradients or velocity gradients or whatever, uh, because it's difficult to do that, right? It's difficult to come up with analytical exact solutions that give us that. What the integral method does is it takes those uh, conservation equations and Re, uh, sort of transforms them or rearranges them in a way that uh, is, is kind of generalized and we can use um, assumed profiles to solve the equation. So I'll talk about what that means. Um, but the, the thing that I like about the integral method is it's, it's really flexible. Um, it's, it's a way of you know, making some kind of general but probably accurate assumption and then using that to get really useful information in a, a variety of, of settings. So this is really the only place where you're going to be um, solving sort of these semi-analytical uh, expressions for boundary layer equations. Okay, so what do we say about integral method? It's very flexible, uses the integral forms of the boundary, uh, boundary layer equations. Um, the steps involved are as follows. So first we assume a functional form for velocity and or for temperature. So think about what I said. We are assuming uh, an equation that tells us velocity or temperature as a function of position y. And specifically, we're saying it's some function of y over delta m. So it's a normalized position with respect to the boundary layer uh, thickness. So this could be something like, OK, I'm going to say u over u infinity is a plus by. Right? That's a linear relationship. So my equation would be a linear function of, of y. I could make it a quadratic. I could make it a cubic. I could make it anything, right? Any analytical expression that I want, I can make it sine of y, right? Whatever you want. That would be the assumed profile. And then I'm going to take that assumed profile, and instead of like solving my PDEs to get a, an actual profile, I'm going to plug in and force that profile into my PDEs and then solve them that way. Um, same thing goes for temperature, but here we have this like normalized temperature. Again, we're doing this in terms of y over delta t. So whatever solution we have for, or whatever profile we have, that profile has to be applicable from x equals 0 all the way up to x equals l. So for the entire length scale of the problem, this is the profile we're assuming. But the profile is like scaling with the boundary layer thickness. Okay. So once we have uh, substituted this stuff in, it'll lead to ODEs for boundary layer thickness, delta M and delta T. If we can compute then the boundary layer thickness at a given position, then we can use that information to solve for things like estimated shear stress, estimated heat transfer coefficient. So we're again going back to this approximate model where we say, give me the boundary layer thickness, I'll tell you something about the, the, the things we actually care about. Okay, so we'll do this um, by first going through and showing where these integral equations come from, and then we'll do an example. Okay, so starting with the momentum equation, um, I'll have to see if I can read my tiny little print here. All right, so starting with the momentum equation, uh, if you have your notes in front of you, I separate the momentum and energy into two slides here, but they're on one slide in your notes. Uh, so what do we have? What we're trying to do is take this equation, so rho times uh, u partial of u with respect to x plus v partial of u with respect to y is equal to minus uh, dp dx plus mu times partial squared of u with respect to y. Okay, so this is our, our boundary layer equation for momentum after making some simplifications, right? This is our simplified version. Uh, this we can't solve directly, usually. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, I want to integrate this equation. I'm going to take this whole thing. Uh, let me do it in a different color so it's clear. So I'm going to take this whole thing. I'm going to integrate this equation with respect to y. And I'm going to integrate it from 0 to delta uh, m. 
So from y equals 0 to y equals delta m. So if I do that, that's going to help me um, uh, formulate it where I can then plug in and, and assume velocity profile and then you know, go from there. So we do that, um, that integral. And OK, so if you want to know all the steps, it's, there's like a couple of pages in the book that go through all the steps. I will give you the result. Um, and then I'm sure tonight, when you're really curious, you'll go back and read it. Uh, but the result is this kind of interesting equation. So the result becomes uh, d dx of the integral from 0 to delta m of uh, u squared minus u times u infinity dy, so that integral with respect to y. So that's the first term. There's uh, four terms here. The second is uh, d u infinity dx times the integral from 0 to delta m of u minus u infinity dy. Third term is uh, velocity at y equals 0. So that's the y component of velocity, right, v. Uh, at y equals 0 times u infinity minus uh, u at y equals 0. And then that's all equal to, go to the next line, 1 over rho uh, times the shear stress at y equals delta m minus the shear stress at, y, at uh, the surface, y equals 0. Okay. So again, all this was is going through and taking this equation, integrating it, and then including some of the results like this y equals 0 to delta m gives you these, these results where you're then trying to evaluate the, the integrals you've applied in some cases where you can that boundary, uh, the, the boundaries. But you end up with this, this expression. So what is this, how does this help us, right? Well, if we assume that we have a characteristic profile for u, a function for u that we can plug in. I can actually go take that function, plug it in here, plug it in here, and so on, in places where I need to plug it in, and evaluate the integral. So you can actually do the integrals. And then you get back some uh, relationship um, that, that then you can use to calculate the boundary layer thickness. Right? So you have this, this integral, you do it to delta m. You'll be able to solve for the boundary layer thickness. Um, what these different terms represent, I guess we can annotate this a little bit, is um, the first term here is, uh, has to do with momentum change. Uh, the second term has to do with pressure, force. Pressure force. The third term has to do with uh, momentum injected at the surface. And then the last term here has to do with shear force. All right. Um, some interesting things here. What is the like? What is this? <laughs> velocity at y equals zero. Why would velocity in the y component of a boundary layer that's flowing in, in x? Why would there ever be a, a y component of velocity at zero? Well, think about a, a situation where maybe you have like a membrane, and you have flow going over that membrane, and then you have mass crossing the membrane and flowing in the y direction. Right? If you have that situation, you would have a y component of velocity at y equals 0. So in, in that case, you would have that term. You could handle that with this type of solution. Um, what else? I guess if you have shear stress at the edge of the boundary layer, normally you don't. Like Normally, the velocity profile is uniform at the edge. But let's say you had a shear-driven flow, like you have maybe um, a disk that's rotating around, and it's driving flow in this layer. That's a shear-driven flow. So your, your, your velocity profile is not 0 at that edge. It's something. And so you could account for that here. So this, 
this equation gives you this really powerful set of tools to handle a, a wide variety of stuff that you would never be able to solve analytically. Like you could never do that with, uh, with the classical Navier-Stokes and analytical solutions. So what we'll do is, yeah, we'll, we'll apply this, go through, and uh, find some interesting results. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so let's say, um, let's say you, yeah, you have external flow. Let's say for some reason the flow is slowing down as it proceeds in the X direction. Okay, let's, you have a flow through a pipe, right? You're flowing in a pipe, and there's mass that's being pulled out of that pipe as you go. That flow is slowing down. So if that's the case, you have this like change in fluid momentum, or pressure, I guess, which is translated momentum. That is a, a change in U infinity with respect to x. So if you have that, this term sticks around. If you don't have that, it goes away. Right? Same thing here. If you don't have a y component, it goes away. So ultimately, you end up being able to simplify this down for a lot of situations. But if you have these special cases, you can, you can handle them. OK, other, other questions on that? So your function of u is going to be in terms of um, the y coordinate uh, over delta m, and then you integrate with respect to y. Yeah, but let's say you assume like a linear profile versus a, a bug mm -hmm. It'll work out regardless of what you take. It'll work out because what you're doing, well, we'll do that. We'll, we'll go through the example. What you do is you you take that um, that uh, assumed profile. So maybe it's a linear profile, A plus B, B, Y. You don't know what A and B are. So you have to, you have to f solve for those values based on conditions that you want to enforce. So if that's like no slip or some condition at the edge of the boundary layer, you, you force those coefficients to match that, and then you solve. But you, you end up get, getting rid of any functional dependence of Y. And again, this is we're assuming a relationship that's only functionally dependent on Y, and it scales with the boundary layer thickness. So there's no dependence on X either. The, the thickness depends on x, but you solve for that. And then you get, uh, you kind of get this uh, relationship that's valid everywhere. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think I just need to think about it. Yeah, and we'll see where, you'll see where it goes. Because if you assume a linear profile, won't you have something completely different than if you assume a sine wave? That's what I'm getting. Yeah, so. That your, whatever coefficients you have is going to fit it. Yeah, so we're. When I say we're assuming a profile, what I mean is we are taking that profile to be the truth. And that carries with the entire solution. So if you're wrong in your assumption, you'll never know, right? Because you've, you've said, this is my profile. I'm forcing it to be the case. It's my model of what's happening. And if in the end your, your model's wrong, well, then your equations are wrong. OK, so, so that's uh, the momentum. Let's, let's just look at the energy equation quickly. Um, so the energy equation is a similar thing. I'll just write out what it is. Uh, the see, we go from. Um, I'm not going to reproduce the original energy equation just because we're short on time. But this gives you d. Oops, sorry. This gives you d dx of the integral from zero to delta t, right? The thermal boundary layer of u times t minus t infinity uh, dy. So first term, again, there's four terms. So that's equal to uh, v at y equals 0 times uh, ts minus t infinity plus 1 over rho c uh, q dot double prime s minus q dot double prime at y equals delta t. And then last term is plus mu over rho c times the integral from 0 to delta t of uh, partial u with respect to y, uh, that whole derivative squared dy. All right, so what these terms correspond, oops, sorry, what these terms correspond to are 
uh, this one here is enthalpy, enthalpy change. Uh, this is uh, energy due to fluid motion. Uh, this term here is conduction. And then the last term here is uh, viscous dissipation. OK, and what, what can we handle with this? Right? Again, this comes from the integral. What can we handle? We can handle situations where you have a specified heat flux at the surface, or where you have a specified heat flux at the edge of the boundary layer. Normally, you'd think that there's no heat transfer at the edge of the boundary layer. Maybe there would be. You can handle a situation where, uh, what? So you do have viscous dissipation, right? You can handle like all those different situations. So uh, we'll leave it there for today, and then we'll kind of pick the rest of this up next time. Thanks.